So the top sheet is on the iPad. The other one is the other one. Okay. The other day. Yeah, I'm through that. I have to talk to you before we start this. Oh, we start start time or we haven't started. Well, Ladies, will you lead us in the pledge? Will you lead us in the pledge? Will you lead us in the pledge? Okay, let's stand for the pledge. We got three o'clock. I pledge Thank you. Roll call. Jenny David. Here. Roger Mayhew. Here. Charles Waltzy. Here. Craig Scott. Here. Brenda. Here. <laughs> Any additions or corrections to the agenda? I have none. Commissioner Mayhew, any additions or corrections? No, nope. I just got my ears turned up. I'm good to go. Public comment. Any public comment in the room on agenda items only? Any public comment on the phone? Did you have your hand up? Come on up, sir. Is this an agenda item? He's on, on the agenda. You're on the agenda. Yep. Are you our transit? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I'll call you up when it's your turn. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Any, uh, any public comment on the phone? Not today. I know. Appointments. Say what? Appointments. Commissioner Simmons, are you good? Here. I am for another few months, yeah. Okay. Appointments. <laughs> Sheriff Gilbert, the Grand Traverse County Jail Inmate Proposal. Under Sheriff, can I come on up? Oh, come on up. I'm sorry. Hi guys. Hello. I got your email from yesterday. Any updates from yesterday? Uh, we did participate in a telephone conference. Is that what you would call it, Tim, with Grand Travers? So the captain and the lieutenant, after the budget meeting, were able to facilitate that when we sat and talked. So Tim got a chance to answer ask some of his questions. Um basically the the synopsis of the phone call that it's not it's not a jail closing situation. So them guaranteeing long range 40 inmates more than three months uh, is just not feasible for them. So they talked about three months of giving us 40 guaranteed, but it, after that, it's going to depend on their circumstance and what they're dealing with. So I've got an example of the contract as far as what they have with Ben Z. But again, it's not a jail closing situation. It's, it's a need and due to overcrowding and that type of thing. It's not quite the magic bullet like a jail closing would be. It's all the revenue numbers. So, Tim, you want to add anything as far as your take on the conversation? It was a, a good conversation. Um, my immediate question was, is this a long-term arrangement? And the answer simply is no. Um, they're looking at, uh, you know, probably, uh, you know, three to four months at tops that they need the 40 beds right now. And it sounds to me like they're going to actually uh, take inmates that they already have in Benzie and Leland. I'll put them here. So that, Understanding that it sounded like the guarantee for that three months that they would they would do that if necessary. It sounds like they have forty initially, but if that number was to drop for the three month discussion, right, that they would be in a position they potentially would have to pull inmates from Benzie and Leland on to to meet that three month commitment. Um, so what that would entail, um, because it's not long term again we're back to the first quarter of our new fiscal year where it sounds like they would be able to send us inmates but no guarantees after that and no guarantee that it'll be 40 the whole time either now paul did crunch some numbers uh, from a revenue perspective between now and the end of the year it was roughly sixty thousand uh, dollars but after that um, anybody's guess uh, there was um, Concern expressed at our last meeting about our staffing levels and the ability to staff at a safe level for the inmates we have now. So we would be adding to that equation as well. 
Uh, and it, just for me, the, at the wall I hit is that this is not a permanent solution. It is four months at best, iffy on the total number of inmates, although they would work hard to make sure that we had 40. They obviously can't guarantee the number of inmates any more than we could. Uh, but that's my hesitation still. It um, patches us through for a few months, but we're right back where we started. And unfortunately, a quarter of the way into the year now, having to be right back where we are today, uh, having to make a decision on what to do next. I think that was my biggest question is, is the meeting prior to this was staffing. I mean, you guys said one more person um, resigns or goes out on leave or whatever. And we were at a critical staffing um, at, at that was two weeks ago. Like, uh, what are we going to change to be able to staff 40 inmates in an emergent situation? Well, and uh, that was asked and answered at the budget, that same very question. And nothing has changed as far as our staffing levels. With the layoffs, we're at bare minimum staffing. And it only takes one or two incidents, and we could be in an emergency situation. So... What we're having to deal with is we could take them Monday and call them on Friday because something happens and we can't safely staff them. It's just one of the factors that's in this scenario that we're having to look at. So I guess that's my question. With the current staffing that we're currently at, which was at bare minimum with just our inmates, the ones that we currently have, are you guys able to staff another 40 inmates coming in? At this point, yes, until unless something happens. And you it, are. Okay. It's the sheriff and, and Tom, and we get the commitment from the employees. Again, it's asking a lot of our employees, obviously. And like I said, something happens. They could be here on Friday and we could for Monday, and we could be calling them on Friday that it's not safe environment anymore. It's well, that was my concern again. Like I said, two weeks ago, it was we were we were barely able to do what we we had and wasn't even sure we could. So my concern is, is bringing another 40 in and our current staffing, like what is, what is our plan for 90 days with our staffing levels without tons of overtime? And that's, he's done a heck of a job as far as filling in gaps and everything, but we're up against it. It's only, we're going to do the best that we can. This would be additional revenue in hopes of creating a long range plan that would keep the jail open and solve it. Again, we get a hiccup, something happens. We're going to have to look at something else. Questions? Commissioner Wilty. Um, I've been in contact with Paul, and we had that budget meeting this morning, so we've been talking about this quite a bit. Um, I, my, I was, was hoping more. I've been over the last, obviously, a couple months, you know, I mean, I've been back and forth on my exact direction of where I wanted because I would really have liked optimally to keep the jail open and, and, and try to make, make this work. But, you know, this, this grand Travers deal is, you know, there's no assurances. Yes. There's a little extra revenue. <clears throat> like Paul said, we have one officer get sick, go down. And there's a chance, you know, not only do we have to send their inmates back, there's a chance then we have to go in emergency mode to send our inmates out. And we're that close tiltering, you know, with what we currently have. So I was really hoping that there was a possibility of something long, long range here. And the thing is, we just don't, you know, we've, we're at, we're at right now and we need to make some, some decisions. Um, that's all that I got right now. Questions for the undersheriff, Commissioner Scott. Uh, no, nothing. Mr. Mayhew. All I know is we've asked them to do this, and they have, and I know it ain't, it ain't sounding great, but as far as I can see, we ain't got a whole lot of choice. Give them a chance. What are we going to lose? Commissioner Simmons. Um, I'm going to bring it up now, but uh, I've had some discussions this morning, and uh, I'm going to bring some other things up in 5A. Not right now, but I'll bring it up later in the Correct. session for the day. Anything, questions for the undersheriff related to Grand Traverse? No, I was part of that. I was privy to that discussion this morning. You're not leaving the meeting, are you? No, I'm not okay. going anywhere. It just uh, The 43 days to September 30th, just for the, for the 35 a day, just for base numbers, 60,200. 
Uh, that's for 40 inmates. Uh, October will be 43, 400. November will be through November 30th, it'll be 42,000. So just out of the 35 a day, it'd be $145,600. That's not the housing fees charged with the inmates, which is another point of conversation, but just for numbers, as far as that three month that was discussed, that would be the base number you'd be working with, 145, 600. So just to, I do have one more question. Go ahead. So, so just to confirm from your guys' conversations this morning with Grand Travers, they guaranteed three months, 40 inmates. No. They said they would do three or four months. They would up to 40 inmates. They would not guarantee 40. Up to 40. Right. And it just depends on what they need. Now, just as part of that conversation, uh, the lieutenant on the other end did talk about an arrangement they had with Lapeer County and why that didn't work for them. And it was primarily for access to the inmate. The local attorneys didn't have easy access to those inmates and the courts didn't have easy access for any kind of court activity. And that being said, I mean, we posed the question, well, don't we have that same issue then with Ogemaw? The answer is yes. So their preference is to say, stay with Leelanau and Benzie just for access to the inmates. I believe Leelanau, at least the uh, last uh, I knew, was part of the Grand Travers District Circuit like we are with Las Common. That makes sense for them. They probably could work out an arrangement with their court and with the local attorneys. They get their access to their inmates. That wouldn't be the case here. Granted, it's not as far away as Lapeer, but it's not as convenient for them either. So that's probably going to limit who they send to us uh, because if it's an active case where they have court, they're not going to want to do transport. They'll probably want to try to keep them as local as they can. So that being said, I'm reading between the lines that's going to possibly eat into the 40 that they might send here. I have no idea how many they have. I think he told us, but I don't remember the total number of inmates they have. It's clearly more than 40. But bottom line is, I think there's going to be a factor in there that we need to think about. And that to me says, well, we'll, we'll give you up to 40. We're not going to guarantee the 40 are going to come. 166. Yeah, is the one number side. that I remember 166. I think that's. <clears throat> so they're so overcrowded right now that Benzie and Leelanau, their have, bordering counties, are full I also? I don't know if it's overcrowding or staffing on their end. I, I don't know about that. It's a combination of both. What they have it? contract with Benzie County. It's a one year contract, January through December of 23 is what they sent me. Assuming they're continuing that, they have been in a relationship with Leo for ten years. He said, um, but there's never been a contract with Leo. That's just the understanding of the two sheriffs and the jail administrators and the counties. Commissioner Simmons, um, maybe when we when when we have that discussion with uh, Grand Travis, it'd be kind of nice if they could just send a sentence inmates. They don't have to go back and forth to lawyers all the time. What are your thoughts about that? There, there was already preliminary dis discussions as far as the type of inmate that they would be sending, um, because obviously transport costs would be an issue that they're going to have to deal with on their end and bringing prisoners to our facility. Without going into great detail, and that would be something that will be part of the conversation tomorrow, they're talking circuit court inmates would be one because a circuit court is spread out over a longer period of time, so there's less need for back and forth to the jail. So that is all a factor that will be discussed operational-wise. All right. That's good to know. Thank you. There'll be more to come. Anything else, Tom? So I cover it? Yep. <laughs> Uh, 4B, we have Tony Dubay, Transit Director, related to the Transit Millage. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, how are you doing today? Good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, have a seat. I got some papers. I turn out. Sorry, I'm kind of a blue behind or green behind the gills with this whole stuff. So welcome. Um, welcome to the team. <laughs> um, but what I did, um, I drafted up a letter um, just kind of expressing, you know, what it is that we're wanting to do with the millage and hopefully getting it put on the ballot. Um, so I printed off, I think seven, I, I think that might be enough. I'm not too sure, but I can pass these out to you guys. Absolutely. Um, if you want to pass them out, if there's enough. Hopefully there is. Great. I, I was shocked to see that the millage, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was shocked to see that the millage did not pass. Yes. And 
I'm kind of in a sticky situation being the new transit director and having this kind of put on my plate. So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if you've been out there in the public, like why I have heard no rationale is why I have, I have no idea. I know every county in the state of Michigan passed their millage for the transit and we're the only county that didn't. Wow. So, um, I'm not too sure, you know, and you know, we're, we're working through it and I'm trying to come up with different ideas on how to, uh, you know, kind of get through it. Okay. Um, but if you haven't already, uh, if you don't mind, can I read this? Please, for you guys? go ahead. Um, so again, my name is Tony Dubé. I am the County Transit uh, Director, and I'm speaking to you today to bring attention to a critical issue facing our community's public transit system, one that will require your support and participation in the upcoming election in November. As a new director of the Ogemo County Public Transit, I've had the privilege of overseeing our public transit operations over the last four weeks, ensuring that we provide reliable and efficient transportation to hundreds of residents daily. However, within my short tenure, I've noticed a high demand for our transit, increased prices of fuel and maintenance, and the current aging of our 14 bus fleet. These factors have made it increasingly challenging to maintain high standards of service that our community deserves in now and in our future. Uh, to fund these necessary improve, uh, improvements, I believe that the millage or a millage of 0 0.5, 0 0.6, um, not necessarily the 0 0.75, I think that was a little too high in my opinion. Uh, would be sufficient to continue daily operations without interruption. I'm asking for the millage to be added to the November election ballot. Uh, the passing of this millage is crucial for securing the funds needed to upgrade our fleet and ensure our transit system remains a vital resource for our community. Um, I understand that the tax increase is a serious, and con a serious consideration, and I want to assure you that the funds that, uh, through this millage will be dedicated solely to the improvement of the transit. Uh, the millage will not only allow us to maintain our current level of service, but also to continue service all uh, to all of Ogema County. Uh, investing in our public transit system um, supports our local businesses. Um, where was that? Yeah, supports our local uh, businesses, reduces traffic congestion, and provides critical access to jobs, education, and health care. Uh, it's an investment that will benefit all residents now and in the future. Um, as we approach the November election, I urge you to consider the importance of this millage for the continued success and sustainability of our public transit system. Uh, your vote will make a significant difference in ensuring Ogemaw County remains a vibrant and connected community. Uh, the passing of the millage is a uh, necessity and not a luxury to allow uh, to allow the Ogemaw County public transit to operate. And thank you for your consideration. So that's what I drafted up. Um, some other things to keep in mind. I know I talked to, I think it was Charlie yesterday, I think, yeah, and Tim. Um, you know, speaking to some of the other transits as well um, and seeing, you know, obviously our, our money in the bank, if you would, um, you know, MDOT did recommend that we have at least a year's worth of our budget in the bank, just in case of unforeseen um, things, you know, like different maintenance costs or the, you know, purchases of new buses and that type of thing. So, um, you know, I think it's just important for us to, you know, at least put this back on the ballot for November. Um, and even if we have it at 0.5.6, I mean, it keeps us afloat, keeps us even, you know, so. Questions? Commissioner Wilsey? Um, I don't really have a question for, for Tony. I, I spoke to Tony yesterday. I've spoken with Tim. Um, obviously, as the, the chairman of the transit board, Commissioner Simmons on it, we have Irma Lurvies here today. She's on the board. You know, it's obviously a very important entity of the county. Um, and I understand the importance of making sure that we have a rainy day fund and that we're secure. It's just the position that we're in and we're continuing to ask for millages and millages and millages. You know, we do have over a hundred percent fund balance. Tim, can do you have that information exact on you actually have it on the one of the sheets that's uh, okay, so included for today, but it's uh, one million four hundred nineteen thousand six thirty seven. That's the unrestricted that does not include the, the the assets. This is just unrestricted fund balance. That's for percentage is 121.97%. So, so that being said, I wanted to talk to Tony yesterday because again, Tony's new. You guys have heard how I feel about Tony and, and I think he's going to bring a lot to this transit. I have a lot of faith in him. I'm looking forward to working with him, but I wanted to let him know my feelings now so he wasn't blindsided by it, but I don't support the fact of us trying to go in November. Commissioner Scott? Well, a couple of different things. First of all, Mr. Doobie, uh, um, we haven't met. Uh, I think maybe once. <laughs> one time. <laughs> at the, okay. the very first meeting I was ever at. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, your point in there about the millage will go to the 
to the transit, it has to go to the transit. Right. We can't spend it on anything right. else. Um, so has the committee, has the, have you talked to the committee about this 0. 0.5 or 6? Not yet. So I know we have a meeting on the 15th of this so month. Thursday, 11. I got to think by talk, talking to people, people are going to ask me, were they asking too much to start with? Right. If they could operate on 0. 0.5, why did they ask for 0. 0.75? Right. And, and that's just, that's just an observation. That's all. Right. I'm not looking for an answer from you, but then again, were you right at 0. 0.75 and are or wrong or are you wrong at 0. 0.5? It used to be 0. 0.3 and then they wanted another 0. 0.3. You put the second 0. 0.3 on and it didn't get spent at all. It just went in the bank. And I backed that second 0. 0.3 and I was very disappointed to learn that they just put it in the bank and didn't do anything with it because Ray thought that the world was going to come to an end and, and he needed another $300,000 in the bank. I, I, I got to say, we've already said early this year, if, if a millage didn't pass, we weren't going to put it back on. Uh, I've watched this millage um, overreach of millages. I, I just think we're just doing it. I don't know. I think we'll just wait a, wait a cycle and there's things I know that you guys can do to make it work. I know, I think you'll do a good job. I don't have a problem on there. Well, with the amount of federal and state funding that comes in, we, we do pretty good. We were a couple of buses short, shorter than we are now. I don't think would hurt us too bad. Your answer is no? No, no. Commissioner Simmons. Uh, my understanding is we still have a millage that's on there that will be collected for 2025. That's 0.3 mills, right? So that will be collected in uh, November, December tax bills when they go out, and that will apply to fiscal year 25. That total amount, uh, actually, ask Randy on the calculations, 321905 uh, that would come in. And that expires. This, so this is the last. This would be the last. This would be the last. 25 would be the last year that we'd see that. So this could go back on in two years. It could. For no cost. Yes, for no cost. Yeah. So Commissioner Simmons, do you want to see it go back on in November or no? <clears throat> well, like Mr. Scott said, I I it may hurt us more than help us. And you understand why I'm saying that later. Yes or no? No. Commissioner Mayhew. I was shocked, Jenny. Nice to meet you. It's the first time I've met you. Um, I was shocked to see that millage uh, not uh, pass. Shocked. I'm a huge advocate of the transit. Um, I have lots of patients that utilize the transit. I have I have uh, family members that utilize the transit. Um, I'm 100% in favor of backing the transit. It sounds like financially you guys are in a good place. I know Ray Ray's biggest concern was the reimbursement from the federal and state and how much that was going to decline over the next uh, year. I guess my question before I, I, I my, give my opinion is, is um, the you said 14 bus fleet. I mean, are there any buses that, um, are the buses in pretty good condition at this point in time? Are they? So to my knowledge, I know we we're supposed to have three buses replaced, but that was already shot down by the state. So um, and buses are pretty expensive. <laughs> um, Correct. Before they're uh, before, remember Ray was telling me they're about seventy to eighty, but now since over the last few years they've jumped up to about one hundred fifty, one hundred sixty thousand per bus, brand new. Um, you know we, you know we got those three that we're still waiting to replace, and you know next year is going to be another three. You know, so it's it's going to be a chunk of change. You know, if eventually if one of those buses do go down, it's you know I'm, I'm down two hundred plus in the hole now, so. Do you see where you're at with with your current fund balance, and then with another 321 coming in next year? Um, I guess, and you're new at this, so I apologize for putting you in this position. Right. Do you think you, you will be able to to somehow, some way, make this work over the next two years? I'm confident, um, you know, on the ability of myself and having Ray with me too. You know, he's been a really good helping hand. 
Um, and I know Karen, you know, offered help too. <laughs> so I, I, I'm still trying to crunch numbers and try to figure everything out. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, if we have to cut some things, I mean, we might have to. Mm -hmm. um, that's something I personally don't want to do. Again, I'm, I'm kind of in a, in a pickle <laughs> being new and, you know, already thinking about doing some drastic changes in order to save money. And, you know, especially now we're going to have to make it work over the next two years. Um, you know, but I've got resources. We're going to try to make it work. Good. So one thing. Go ahead. Yeah, I just, I don't want to get discouraged because this is, didn't go through and we're probably not putting it on. I think I've, I've been here a while and I've watched the transit. I think there's a, a, no, a whole number of changes that you can make to save a ton of money and operate it more efficiently. Uh, my background is transportation too, so I, I see it there. Um, there wasn't always years to, to listen to it, uh, what I said. Um, and uh, I think just uh, how you operate the personnel and everything. I think I think you you'll find you'll find places to save money. I think there's a little hanging fruit just sitting right there right now. Easy stuff, oh. and then you can dive into the deeper. But I think you got the money for it. You really do. My initial vote was was yes, one hundred percent. But since we have two transit committees sitting here. Um, at the table and their vote is no and obviously they have a much better idea about your budget than, than I do. I'm going to have to uh, go with what their decision was, which was no, but I'm glad you're here. Mm -hmm. uh, please continue to communicate with us and um, I, I think uh, you have a great committee. You have a great board um, and Ray's a, a, been a very good director. So, yes. Um, <clears throat> my understanding is that, um, you know, we Everybody said, "Gotta have Saturday transit." Saturday transit. My understanding right now, there hasn't been very many passengers on Saturday transit. Am I right or am I wrong? Oh, I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head. I mean, they're not as obviously they're not as much as during the weekday. Um, but you know, to the point. Yeah, I mean, not as much on Saturday. But I mean, that's again one of those uh, one of those things where you know if someone needs to go to a grocery store and that's the only day or you know, I know some doctor's offices are open on Saturdays and that's the only time they can go. You know, that's why we are, we're operating on Saturdays as well. So. And I understand that was, ha I was part of that when all that happened. I was absolutely hated, but I was kind of um, concerned when I found out, you know, there's only one or one or two passengers that, or three or four passengers that are on a Saturday and that does concern me. I mean. I think that's something for you guys to look at from a committee standpoint and, but I. All right, and, and as a chair of the committee, I haven't seen numbers that represent that low. I mean, we have another meeting this Thursday, and we get those numbers. So, but I haven't seen anything. I haven't had anybody talk to me about those type of numbers. Something for you guys to talk about. Thank you, sir. Anything else? No. Nice to meet you. One quick Thank you. thing I'll say, Tony, is that this is this is a great opportunity for you. You could you could come out really looking good by just diving into it. Well, I'm working, working with less and, and making more out of it. I'll tell you, I'm not doing it for good. myself. You know, I'm just doing it very rewarding. Yeah, Thank you, sir. No. Thanks. Thank you. 5A. Thank you, Tim. Jail Millage discussion. Tim? All right. This is uh, <clears throat> I think part of the reason why we're meeting at 3 o'clock. I'm mindful of the clock. If the board wants to put a millage on the ballot, we have until 4 o'clock to get the language to the clerk. So we've got about 32 minutes to work with if my clock is accurate. Um, I've reproduced for you the material that you've seen before, the three options that we went through. The one option was for staffing at the fiscal year 23 rate, the fiscal year 24 rate, and then uh, an option that would be our reality if we go for a millage and it fails. Uh, I've handed out to you uh, right now a, a copy of an updated budget just for the corrections, and there's only one change. Um, after we met with Ross Common County, and I'll go through that agreement here in just a second, um, they did ask for uh, uh, that we split the medical costs with them. It would be roughly 40000 a year. They're paying about 90000 I'm just using round numbers. They said a 60-40 split, but just for the sake of discussion, uh, roughly 40000 from Ogemaw. 
So I've highlighted that line on that uh, handout that you have that would be for the inmate medical expense. Uh, I already had 20, uh, or 25,000 budgeted in there uh, just for the expenses that we might anticipate uh, normally. So adding that 40 gets us to that 65,000. And then at the bottom, you can see the impact on the overall general fund. It still keeps that uh, surplus or fund balance rate about $400,000 or almost 4%. I did also want to point out uh, just above that line, there's one that's called medical services contract. And this would be the contract that we would have should we remain uh, fully functional uh, in our, our current uh, configuration. Uh, we were looking at uh, a fee of 191393 So you can see the difference already just in the jail medical that we'd be looking at. Uh, other components to the contract, um, the main one to really consider is the rate. Uh, what the Ross Common would agree to do is reserve 35 beds at $35 a day, which is exactly what we budgeted for the expense here. So about $447,125 to uh, accommodate that. But they're also stating in the uh, proposed agreement that that rate would be in effect regardless of fluctuations that might decrease the numbers. So if we ended up having only 31 inmates, we're only going to pay for 31, not 35. But likewise, in the next paragraph, Roscom is not guaranteeing anything above 35. So if we have inmate number 36, they might not be able to house that inmate. So we would need to find an alternative location uh, for that inmate. Now, prior conversation, and it was just a passing conversation with the sheriff, he thought of IOSCO immediately. I did get an email yesterday from Clare County, and they are looking for inmates to fill the beds in their facility. And last check, they had about 80 beds that uh, they were looking to fill. They've contacted another county and are working with them. Uh, Clare is trying to become one of those regional hubs, if you will. Uh, so they're going to look at other counties around them as well. But I bring that out only to state that uh, that is an option. So if we had a sentenced inmate that we have to house for another 30, 60, 90, 120 days or whatever, that inmate could easily be put into a facility like Claire. I uh, don't know what their rate would be at this point, but this is an inmate that doesn't have to come back and forth to court. They're pretty much finished with that. They're finishing out their sentence. So this is uh, one of those inmates that doesn't have a whole lot of uh, you know, additional uh, expense other than obviously medical, if anything like that were to happen. So I think there are outlets there should we get above 35. Uh, other uh, issues, this is a contract that's proposed as a three-year term, so it would take us through 2027, uh, give everybody a chance to take a step back and reevaluate at that point as to whether it's meeting uh, our needs. Uh, and the other issue had to be transport. We are already budgeting for doing transports out of Ogamaw. Uh, as I mentioned in one of the other earlier schedules, uh, twice a day on weekdays, once a day on weekends. Uh, the lockups under statute, they're called like a 72-hour lockup. So we could hold somebody up to 72 hours, but with that kind of a schedule, that kind of a rotation, we shouldn't need to hold anybody more than 12 hours at any given time, 24 hours on a weekend. Uh, but with the ability, if we were to uh, get our on-call transport back, of literally having it on-call. So if we needed to make a special trip, we'd have somewhere to call to do that. Uh, there are discussions in here about how we would handle uh, uh, medical appointments of duration that, that would require, uh, you know, if it's a longer term duration, we would send a transport officer to do that. But if it was just a regular normal type medical situation, uh, Roscommon would do that. But Roscommon is also suggesting that if they do have to do transports for us, that would be at a rate of $30 an hour to do the transports. But like I said, that's built into our budget. We shouldn't have to do that unless we're short-staffed or whatever. Uh, but it's, it's good to know that that option's there. The balance of this agreement is almost word for word what we had proposed initially, what our attorneys had already looked at. Uh, you know, Obviously, we'll have our attorneys look at it one more time. I mean, you'll want to take a look at it yourself. Um, I felt that it was a very constructive meeting. We had uh, the representatives of the sheriff and the jail administrator from Roscommon, as well as their administrator and two county commissioners. Uh, as we were having these conversations, uh, I felt and uh, deferred to the law enforcement committee, but I felt our questions were answered. I think theirs were. And so that's where we stand. Now, again, mindful of the clock. 
if you do want to try uh, the millage route, I've got language here that is uh, just needs the numbers filled in. How many mills and how much would that generate? There are a couple of tables built into the uh, documents that you see here. So, you know, if you wanted to look at various uh, millage rates and what they would bring in, there's a table there that you can look at to do so. Uh, I've made arrangements with the department in this building, should you want to do this, to get over there on your directive, fill in those blanks and get it to the clerk. So. On your shift, can you come up? And Tom, Tom I was calling him. Hey, sir, questions. So, um, Tim, I didn't see transportation on this special funds budget. Where, where, what line item, where is that under? Yeah, it's in, uh, First place that you would see it would be the part-time wages, the 30,000 that's budgeted, and that's directed to the on-call transport. Okay. okay. And we've got the gas, oil, and grease budget uh, is uh, increased uh, to accommodate those those trips. I actually had a formula I'd written up in one of the prior documents, um, uh, you know, three gallons of gas per trip, uh, all that kind of thing calculated. It came out with the number that's uh, budgeted here, 14,000. Uh, and that would, in effect, cover it. So that's no different. The 30000 that you recommended is no different than what they requested for the part-time? Right. So the request from the department was your status quo with uh, full-time staffing, but to bring back the part-time, which would, again, likely be board uh, on-call uh, transport to continue that. Again, we had to discontinue that because of the union contract. The union was unwilling to allow part-timers to come back when there were people on layoff. Uh, that is no longer the case right now. We've uh, gotten through the timelines uh, recalled and had uh, all of our steps are covered. So um, I believe we can go back to doing that now if that were our choice. Uh, but yes, that's, that's what they requested. So would be recommended. I guess before we, I ask each one of the commissioners their opinions on this, I would like both of your guys's. This is your department. Uh, I guess you're asking as far as the millage itself with rent or? Ooh, millage. <clears throat> I guess start with, are you in favor of putting a millage on? It's one potential revenue source that we could ask for. Uh, that we could factor into the budget to keep the jail open and address some of those. So, is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Now, what rate are you re re recommending? Uh, I would stay somewhere around that one that we talked about before. I, I just don't. I don't feel that like going any higher than that's going to give it. <laughs> Mister, no, no, Mister Howard. Same questions. I, I agree with Paul. We've talked about this. Okay. Everything in the rates. Commissioner Simmons. I had discussions this morning too, and I agree with the one mill. And I said, no, I don't want I don't want to keep the jail open on maybes and possibilities. And this is a maybe and a possibility. But the the savings that we'd have right now without a mill is you no know, four hundred and some thousand dollars. If we put a mill on, that's just over a million dollars. Means we get to keep the jail open plus have extra dollars left over to help offset the the balances that's um, coming from the uh, jail, the cost. Also, we've been using the um, commissary fund. We use quite a lot of money out of the commissary fund to help offset some of the costs too. So I'm just throwing it out there. There's a possibility of a mill. Uh, if it were to pass, we'd be ahead of the game than if we closed the jail. But if we close the jail, that's a certainty. And passing a millage is, is not a certainty. So I just would like you to think about that stuff. Um, because if the millage were to pass, we'd be ahead of the game. I, I guess I'm going to question your, your numbers there. You, you stated the difference between... Um, continuing with what we're currently doing and the administrator controller recommended budget. What were your numbers that you said the difference was? Cause I, it's not what I'm seeing in front of me. I'd say we saved four or $500,000 max, but if we passed a millage, that millage would bring in just over a million. Tim, what is the exact savings? Well, um, the recommended budgets, uh, 1,567,925. 
Yep. The millage that would. Uh, no, your the requested the, budget. No, the requested budget is two million three thirty eight four zero seven. Okay. Yep. And the numbers you see at the very bottom, uh, the one that says surplus deficit on it, that's for the entire general fund under the recommended budget. We would have a surplus of just under four hundred thousand. Um, the uh, requested, uh, actually, the requests that came in from departments was uh, almost two hundred six thousand more than the revenue that we projected coming in. So that's why we go through this exercise and trim back. And so it's about a six hundred thousand dollar savings, roughly, correct? Um, it's not all attributed to the to the jail cost, but it's about $900,000 difference between what was requested and what's been recommended. Oh, okay, that's different numbers than I was aware of, sorry. I just say your numbers weren't, okay, I wanted to make sure so just, we're looking at something different. That's, that's not all jail, mind you, that's the entire general fund, not the, the jail component of it you see on the uh, numbers that on the detail above that. So Commissioner Simmons, I guess, because we don't have a ton of time, are you in favor of a millage? Um, so you, you're telling these are the cuts of the whole general fund. What would the cuts be? What would we save just the jail clothes? Well, it was requested was two point three million. Uh, the recommended is one point five. So you to run the jail, it would right. close it. Uh, lock up scenario. Yes. So two point three to continue uh, status quo. One point five to go to the lockup model. So my figures don't match, do they? Roughly about six hundred thousand. Yeah. Would we say more with the millage or not? More than that, yes. Well, it depends on uh, how much you'd be asking for. If you're asking for a mill, that's going to get you one point one million. So add that to the uh, to the mix. I mean. It would definitely uh, be sufficient to cover what we were asking, but as I mentioned before, there's the possibility that it doesn't pass. And then now we're eating into the uh, surplus that's projected here. And if we do that, that takes that almost 400,000 surplus down to uh, 268,000. Uh, and we still have other work we've got to do on the budget yet that we know there'll be some expenses with. So in effect, it puts us right back where we are. With very little. Surplus. Well, then it would not be a good. It would not be a good route to go. Is what we're saying. It, it's risky. It's risky. Yes. And we can't. I mean, I'd love to do this, but we just, I don't think we can afford to take the risk. Commissioner Simmons, yes or no on a on a millage? I guess I have to say no. I'm just not willing to take that much risk. That's a lot of risk. Commissioner Mayo. Yes. At what rate? One. Commissioner Scott. Is this uh is this an all made up? If the voters voted down, are we gonna go a different route or not? If we're gonna keep it open and at two point three million dollars, then we have to go to someplace else in the county. Are we just gonna cut every one person out of every office then? I don't know if we're at a point in time where we can make that decision right now. We're talking about a million. Oh, yeah. We're right here at this point right now. We're not. This is an ultimatum. Commissioner Scott. It, well, you want. It's not an Scott, ultimatum. you guys. Well, no, no, no. The only reason you're talking about a millage is you want the people to tell you yes or no. No, that's Scott, not true. Scott. What's not? Commissioner Scott, say what you have to say. Yes. <laughs> What this has been the this has been the whole theme of all the millages this year. I know is what are, does it give the people the chance to tell us yes or no. I know. So we're at that point right now. If it fails, are we going to operate at two point three million dollars where we don't have? Commissioner Simmons, and I think we have some a couple of things that I learned in a, in that meeting up in Roscommon County Friday. Just that jail, uh, just that medical thing that he was just talking about, it would cost us $40,000. Do you know what the medical cost is? The medical cost us $180,000 this year. That was just this year. That was now it's projected one hundred ninety one. We'll save one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Commissioner Scott, please lower just your on that one. Line. 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 Yes, lower your voice. Okay. Enough. We're going to save one hundred fifty thousand dollars on one line. And one I, I, line. 
you've had your opportunity. Well, Enough. I want another Double one. When I come back to you. Thank you. No, no. Thank you. I, it's it's voter exhaustion. Commissioner Wilty. This has been a really tough decision for me. Um, I felt that if there was that possibility that Grand Travers was going to come in here last minute and possibly look at a one-year contract, I've been talking a lot with under sheriff. I uh, appreciate his hard work the last four or five days on this because I do know that there's a the lodging costs. You know that there's other ways we can try to make the sport, other ways to capture this money, but it would take a lot of hard work. But I really feel like we would have needed that longer commitment. From Grand Travers to be able to even think about that. Um, again, we're at a point financially in this county where we don't have anywhere to go. I mean, there's there's nothing there's nothing left. We cannot continue to kick the can down the road. Again, this is an extremely hard decision to put on five people, but we are broke. We have nothing. We cannot afford to operate this county at the level we are. And right now, all we have is assumptions. We have something that's real with Rock Common. We'll give it some time to regroup. I just do not feel that moving forward is that is our best option, and I say no to the millage. Mr. Simmons, I agree with you. And this thing that about saving the thing on medical was just brought up this morning. That I wasn't aware of, and I said before I don't want to do it on possibilities and. And um, some maybes, and I've said that before. But my possibility was one mill. It was, and through this conversations before, I I agree with you. We need to go with what we know is going to happen, and not a maybe, because I said that before in last meeting. So as far as the millage goes, under the circumstances, my answer would be no. I threw it out there for discussion. Was all. My answer was yes on the millage. Um, I think we have three no's sitting here right now. The reason my rationale behind it is because the residents are paying for this. Um, I think that they have a right to go to the polls to express their opinion. Um, I was going to go with one mill. Uh, it would buy us some more time. We don't know. A lot of things can change between now and November. Um, some things can pop up. Obviously, I wish this with Grand Travers would have happened much sooner. Um, I think we've given lots of opportunity um, for some revenues. Uh, as far as we, we've thrown out their ticket, ticket tickets, we've thrown out their car washing, we've thrown out there lots of, of other avenues. Um, we came down to the uh, very end of the end of the stopwatch here. Um, I don't want to see this go to just a lockup. I think once it does. Uh, the chances of that ever turning around uh, will will be bare minimum. This impacts a lot of residents in this community. Um, their families, they spend money here, they go to school here, they live here, they eat here. Um, I think five people making this decision is not the way to go. I do feel we got voted in for these uh, residents to make these decisions, but I wanted to hear from the public. Um, so my, my vote on the millage was yes at one mill. Um, I, I believe we have three, three no's and two yeses. So that's where we're at. Everyone come in. Mr. Simmons. Yeah. I feel badly about this. I really do feel badly about this, but we are in dire straits right now. Um, really dangerous streets. So, I wish I could say yes to that because I wish I knew for certain that that millage was going to pass. If I knew for certain that millage was going to pass, it would be good street. If that millage doesn't pass, we're in a big mess. Bigger than what we are right now. But but, I, I guess we can we can move on. Uh, B, fiscal year 2025 millage rates. We have a table among the documents that shows the various millage rates, both the general operating and the special voted millages and where they stand after rollbacks and the revenue that they would generate. 
Um, you've also got uh, a little further down, uh, we'll swipe over two to 5C3, uh, summary of fund balances for the various funds that we have. And you can see what they are dollar in the percentage uh, that that equates to. Now, again, for review, uh, the general rule of thumb is two months worth of fund balance uh, to assure yourself of stable financial uh, ground. However, in some cases, it may be uh, more appropriate to have a little bit more than that, some cases a little bit less. So you've got the best of both worlds here. You've got the actual dollar amount and you have the percentages uh, that are located. So. Uh, that maybe can guide as to you know what uh, type of rate uh, you feel needs to be assessed on those millages. Now, what I don't have are the other units that are out there. For instance, I don't have the uh, what would be the equivalent of a fund balance at Commission on Aging. They are actually organized as a nonprofit 501c3, so they, I would need to have an updated 990 form to be able to figure out what that is uh, online on all of the. Um, uh, federal sites for the 990s, they only go to 2022. So I don't have the current figures. And then uh, we've got 911 and EMS in there as well. Uh, I would have to find their audits again and figure out where they stand. The others are all departments or funds within the county. And so you can see what their millages would bring at the current rate and uh, what their fund balances are for comparison. And of course you've got their proposed budgets. Questions, comments? Well, these are all, these are all, most, most of them are restricted funds, so you can't use them for anything else. Um, that's the way it is. I mean, so, um, no, the big one, the big one there is that opioid remediation, that settlement. Once more rules come out, that maybe we can use it for different things, but until that happens, we're, we're not going to be able to tap anything there. Um, um, well, there was, but there was one. The uh, road patrol millage so patrol activities. This is a this is just remaining money for the rest of the year. That was at the end of fiscal year twenty three. So we're into twenty four now, um, and I'm very confident they're not going over budget. So that will increase a little bit. Uh, but you can see that was only two and a half percent. It's it's not much. Yeah. Well, but that could that could if if like M Coles doesn't come through. We may be able to tap a little of that to to take up the difference and keep our keep our uh, deputies in in academies. Right. That you know, I mean, we're still we're not still one hundred percent funded from outside sources for yeah. for the academy yet. M Coles is still going through their process. I'm not receiving notification as far as M Coles and Michigan Work is dependent. Their final outcome, I just don't know the date, depending on what M Cold answered. So I've got messages out. And... Sorry, I ask out word there, but can I? <clears throat> um, what What is the projected cost of the an academy? You know, is it 10000 10000 yeah, minus the wages and some of the benefit, but you're you're seven to ten thousand dollars. You're in that ballpark. I was gonna say eight something, but I would have to okay. go back and double check the actual. I don't want to have to tap it, but there it, there's enough there to keep two of them in the academy if M Coles doesn't come through. I, I think what we did here a couple of years ago is we looked at, um, I know Commissioner Scott, you were part of that. We looked at these millages, we looked at the services that they were provided, uh, we looked at their fund balance. Um, and made some pretty difficult decisions as far as uh, how much we were going to collect. Because at the end of the day, it is the commissioner's um, decision. Um, we we had good. each, Commissioner Scott, Go ahead. please. I won't get the answer. We had each uh, uh, department head come in and uh, discuss their um, village, their their futures, their projects, um, and answer any questions that we had. Because we did cut 
a few, uh, I don't know the proper verbiage, uh, millage that we collected, um, especially during COVID there when we didn't feel like the services were being provided that the residents were paying for. So we're we're now talking about the budget that these these um, um, will impact. So that's why I did ask for these to be put on here and we need to start this conversation because um, I, I don't feel like all of these um, have been providing the services. Um, specifically, I'm gonna I'm gonna say the road patrol. Um, you know, I and I understand there's staffing issues, and I I respect that. Um, but but at the end of the day, the residents have been paying for 24 hour road patrol. Um, they've been doing. We we got a legal opinion. Nothing has been done illegally by any means. But um, you know, in my opinion, from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. is not 24 hour road patrol, which is what residents have been paying for. Um. I know that hasn't been the entire year, but it has been uh, recent. So I I think that's a conversation. I'd rather have that sooner than later. So I'm gonna leave that open. Mr. Simmons. Make a comment on that. And I understand and in one of our decisions earlier on was part of that situation with uh, three, three uh, uh, road patrol people. Um, you're talking about not accepting all the road patrol millage, is that correct? That's the one that I'm directly talked about just by looking at these millages and services. Right now, we're just kind of at a general conversation looking at these uh, projected revenues and millage rates. Well, right now, the Sheriff's Department is, is running really shorthanded of road patrol people. And uh, part of that was one of the decisions that, that we made. And uh, I think if we take that road patrol millage now and don't give it to them, then it's because it's for training and um, getting people on road patrol also, as well as doing the road patrol. I would hate to take that millage away from them now when we got two going to the academy with the possibility of more going to the academy to come on to road patrol, especially if, if the jail closes. Um, I would hate to take the millage away uh, to alleviate that from, from, to stop that from happening. I think if it doesn't work out, then maybe maybe next year, don't take all the road patrol millage. But I'd say you have to give the sheriff a chance uh, because he is so shorthanded right now. And like I said, part of it was due to us. I think we should collect all the road patrol millage. And I was, I was adamant about not collecting the road patrol millage. I was adamant, absolutely. But if we take it, then how can he hire people? This year we have three, four, five, six people. He won't be able to hire them because he won't have any road patrol millage to hire them with. Just food for thought out there. I, I don't think I was talking about taking it. I was I was definitely talking about not collecting the hundred percent um, because I don't disagree with the short staffing. But then again, remember there were school two school resource resource officers that were off all summer that re that hopefully help fill in those gaps of um, some of the missing um, positions. Well, so we, again, I wasn't by any means, I just wanna make sure that you're aware of that I was not talking about stopping it. I My thoughts were it was to not collect all of it when not all those services have been being provided, I in understand. my opinion. But they haven't been provided this year. But if we take it now for next year, it won't be provided next year either. I think you need to get, we need to give the sheriff an opportunity to get road patrol deputies hired so they can have road patrol without that funding. I don't think you'll be able to do that. We're still gonna be the same place we were before. And if it doesn't work, then then the following year, think about not collecting it all. You know, if you don't have the hires, if you don't have the people that come in, but because of us, he lost, he lost three road patrol people that were road patrol. I just think we need to give the sheriffs a chance to get the people he needs to make this a reality because of all the funding, I don't think he'll ever make it reality. Commissioner Mayhem. It's tough is, <clears throat> I don't have a real good idea for him. We'll just wait and see what he does, I guess. But if we don't, I guess, that's one of the options we have. 
we can do it. Commissioner uh, Scott. I'm totally surprised I'm hearing all this. This, this is somebody's hallway discussion because I've not heard this at all this year. I, I don't know what's been going, what's talked behind the scenes, I don't know, but I am not in favor of cut, cutting back any part of the, the road patrol millage for, for any reason this year. Um, I was the one that initiated the, the, the thought of even doing the road patrol millage way back in 18. We didn't do it then, we put it on in 20. On a, when we put it on 20, it did not say 24-7. It did not say night patrol, even though it was characterized as a night patrol millage. It was not written in as that. When we renewed, when we voted to renew the uh, uh, the millage and put it back on a ballot because the first four years expired, uh, I said then, don't put 24-7 on it. You put 24-7 on it, you're, you're, you're setting a standard. No, the road patrol millage was in the beginning was to, to give the road patrol, the sheriff's department, a millage so that the deputies didn't have to go look for a job at the end of every year. That's what they were doing. They were being told at that time by a different administration that the commissioners are probably going to cut you and you'll have to, you got to look for another job. This way, it was guaranteed that they had a job. Uh, but I, as far as this discussion, you're telling me right now, I haven't heard anything about it. And I have no reason at all that I would vote to cut back on, on what they're doing, uh, on what they, on what we collect for them. None. None. <clears throat> Well, obviously, right now we're in the the main talks of uh, the budget, and these millages are all uh, part of the budget. So that's why this conversation is taking place. We talked last week that we were going to bring each one of the department heads and go over. So this isn't the first time that this has been discussed. Well, um, the the road patrol millage is a is a strict, a special restricted budget. This doesn't affect the the this does not affect the general fund, the general budget. The money that we collect for road patrol goes to road patrol. That's it. I don't disagree with that, but a lot of residents in the at the township meetings are are very discouraged with the. Um, oh. I, I'm gonna finish. Are very discouraged with the services and have asked me that question. So, um, I think they're aware of the, the short staffing, but they are again extremely discouraged with the services that they've been being provided. So that's that's then, that's why I'm here and that's why I'm voicing that at this point in time. Okay, well, Commissioner Wilty. My only comment to that is you're 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 using the budget to punish them for something that you don't feel that they're giving you. This has nothing to do with a personal standpoint. That's personal to somebody Wilson, at a please meeting. Go, please somewhere. go ahead. No, well, obviously we're shorthanded. We're trying to fill a few positions. Bottom line is, is we need to have as many county road deputies on the road that our county government financially can afford. We need to have them on the road to protect our citizens. That's the main function in my eyes of the sheriff department. We need to have as many county deputies on the road as often as we can at a level we can afford. Um, when it's in regard to right now with what's happening, yes, none of us are, are happy about that. Um, Sheriff Department is working on it. I'm not happy with the communication, but they're working on it. We do need to get some more deputies in here. I guess that's all I really have to say at this point. Hmm. Fiscal year 2025 budget. Get back to the... Okay, so a few things uh, that we have on here. First, um, we'd originally scheduled to have district court budget conversation at this meeting. The court representatives aren't available for this meeting, but they will be available at our next meeting next Thursday. The court uh, did uh, as of last Friday, and we were getting the briefing on this at the budget committee meeting this morning. As of last Friday, came up with another configuration we'd like to discuss. 
so that's, uh, I just am not uh, knowledgeable enough to really even break that down for you to know what that is. So uh, we could just postpone that conversation to next week. Uh, I think we can have a much better conversation with the court representatives here. Perfect, public hearing date. So we are um, obligated by statute to have a public hearing on the budget. Um, when we have the public hearing, that doesn't mean you have to adopt the budget at that meeting. You just have to have a time set aside for the public to come in to discuss the proposed budget. I think you're in a position right now to really choose any of your future meetings between now and the fourth the meeting in September to hold that meeting on the budget calendar just as automatically put at the last regular meeting in September. It doesn't have to be there. So I'm really asking for your guidance as to when you'd like to have that. It would take me about two weeks to turn around a hearing over into September, uh, obviously to do that. But uh, maybe, maybe the, you know between the second or third meeting of September we could do it, or we could just continue on with the fourth one. Uh, either way, I just need to know so I can get the hearing notice published. Opinions, Mr. Simmons. I don't have anything to say. The public hearing date. When in September would you like it? That's scheduled the fourth. Every day is a good day. Commissioner Mayhew. <laughs> yeah. I don't know which one that is. My, me neither. Commissioner Scott. It's as early as possible is fine with me. I've seen seven public hearings on budgets. The shortest one was probably 15 seconds long, and the longest one was probably two minutes. Nobody comes here to state, state anything about the public. And I think that's the same thing at most of your townships. You raise your township budget hearing up, but I see the supervisor over there nodding his head. We open it up for discussion. There's no discussion. There's a motion to close it. That's how fast they go. Yeah. I'd like people to answer, ask questions about it. I really would, but they don't. So get it on there. And let's get it done. Commissioner Wilsey. I'd, I'd like to see it. What, it's currently set for the, the fourth Thursday. That's that's on our budget calendar, and that's really our you know deadline or final date that we could do that would be September twenty sixth. But we could uh, probably get it in the paper for the fifth if you wanted it that soon. Yeah. But certainly the twelfth. I'd like it to stay. Sorry, Tim, I just wanted to get my voice. I'd like it to stay where it's at. Okay. Other. Twenty seventh. Twenty six. Twenty six. I think so. Twenty seventh. Other. Anything there, Tim? I'm not sure why there's other. Just in case something else were to have come up or there were other topics the board wanted, I did put on there that uh, position allocation list. So you've got that one that's current that uh, matches the budget. But other than that, unless there's any other um, components of the budget that the board would like to talk about, I, I've kind of exhausted my subjects. Anybody? MMP interlocal agreement. So I've got for you the draft interlocal agreement that's been developed by the uh, multi-county group that we've been working with. Uh, we are on a deadline at the end of this month uh, to have this uh, material into the state. So uh, next uh, Thursday on the 22nd would be the regular meeting date that we'd need a resolution to approve this. The draft was uh, developed by our council uh, who is actually counsel for several of the other counties who are part of this, including Isabella. Uh, so they've clearly reviewed it. Mm -hmm. The um, components that are in here right now are just strictly matching what our minimum requirements are with the state to uh, get this operation underway. But it would uh, definitely commit our funding, uh, majority of our funding, to this multi-county uh, effort. Mm -hmm. So when the state issues its uh, material management planning dollars, uh, we would end up being a pasture. It would come to us, and then we would use that to pay our share of this multi-county group. There is a portion of that, uh, roughly uh, ten to 11000 each year, that will stay with this county for any kind of uh, implementation that we might want to do for material management. But that, uh, frankly, is the commitment. So uh, this would definitely... Uh, uh, put us, it would solidify our seats on the group. Um, Commissioner uh, Scott would be our representative on this board, and they do have a meeting on Friday. Uh, so I don't know, Commissioner Scott, if you got the email on that, uh, I believe there's a Zoom uh, hookup. Um, so that's where we are. We're, we're at the point uh, we've uh, uh, reached our deadline to get the 
get the project uh, rolling. Our legal team did look at this. They they developed this. Okay. So, questions, comments. Commissioner Scott. This is uh, required by the state that we do this. They're they're giving us the funding. It's not costing us anything out of our pocket. I have uh, I have contacted people in other counties and and in the in the private companies and there's nothing else. They've got the Isabella's come to us. We've gone down to the site. Um, I think we'll just go ahead and do this. So fulfill, fulfill our requirement to the state and we'll go from there. Anything else, commissioners? No. Uh, tax sharing agreement with West Branch Township. So we received a message from the chair of the DDA at West Branch Township uh, where he stated to us that they voted at the DDA to not collect any new uh, special millages that are voted on uh, in the county. And what I'd like to do is not rely on that email, but to rather get the, the formal agreement like we have with Ogemaw Township and Rose City. And you've got a draft here uh, that memorializes that. So that would commit both us and the DDA moving forward that they would not collect those special millages. And I just would like your authority to go ahead and make this uh, proposition to West Branch Township and then uh, hopefully get a signature and bring it back for your execution. Commissioner Wiltsey. No, I appreciate Tim putting this together. Uh, West Branch Township DDA voted. They voted to uh, no longer capture the money. And I said we just keep the throttle down and get this to them and get this in signatures and get in the books. Commissioner Scott. Yeah, this is a, a fair compromise from the from West Branch Township. I mean, they don't have to do this. And I guess they're extending the olive branch out. So sure, if they're willing to do it, go ahead. Commissioner Mayhew. Yeah, it's a fine by me. Commissioner Simmons. I thank West Branch Township. I thank West Branch Township DDA for for making um, this agreement. Um, I'm pleasantly surprised and happy that it happened. Thank you to the other DDAs as well. Yes. This is something they did not have to do that they voluntarily did. So and Commissioner Wilsey took the lead on that. So thank you for that. County building accessibility. Commissioner Wiltsey was going to meet with uh, our building official and take a look at that entrance and talk about uh, options. And it's been a matter of literally days. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I'm I was actually going to do that. So spoke with Brian real quick today. Told him I'd be in touch with him tomorrow. But I am meeting with um, Craig tomorrow and with the electrical inspector over at the county building. And hopefully Chris will join us. And we're going to go up and we're going to get serial numbers like on chillers and just started to look into what we exactly have there and find out who would actually service. Um, I found out from Craig that like when they reset these a while ago after a leap year, it's all analog, there's nothing digital. So we know we have a real old system there, but we've got to get in front of this and figure out what we have and the operations of it and try to get a professional in here who knows it and can tell us if we are operating correctly for what the equipment we have right now, or if we are operating not correctly and what can be done with what we have to operate correctly to save money on utilities. So I'm meeting with him tomorrow. Um, I'll contact Chris in the morning. Hopefully Chris will meet us over there as well. And then I will move on and be talking with Brian in regards to the, the front entrance and the handicap accessibilities. So can we put this on the committee of the whole for next time so we continue to yeah, you'd asked at the last committee of the whole this continue to be a discussion until we've got it addressed. So yes, it'll it's already pasted on the future agendas. Thank you for that. July 2024, July 2024 overtime slash comp time report. Okay, this is the same report that you see. We didn't have it um, uh, at the last meeting because we were literally the day after July was finished. So uh, these are the most current figures. Uh, the first page is uh, normal. This is uh, di taken directly from our accounting uh, software, the BSNA, so that you can see what's budgeted year to date and the percentage used. 
The graphs that follow are just comparing the current year to prior years. Uh, you can see what, what those trends look like. And then the last uh, page is the, the actual uh, spreadsheet that shows by employee where the overtime and compensatory time was earned and taken and balances in the various banks. Comments, questions? Commissioner Wolsey? Uh, no comment. Commissioner Scott? I have nothing on that. Commissioner Simmons? Nothing. Mr. Mayhew. No, okay. Commissioner comments. Any? Mr. Scott. Um, in a lot of meetings we come to, we just okay um some pretty simple stuff. And but then there's times that we have to make tough decisions. And we're at that point again. And it's just tough. I mean, it, I, and sometimes it, I wonder why we volunteer to do it, but <laughs> um, just Commissioner Wiltsy said it. We're we're at our backs up against the wall. That's it. Commissioner Wiltsy, I've got a number of meetings still coming up this week, so I'll have more to report for next week. But again, um, I made it very clear that these decisions that we've had have to make are not easy. I love this county. I really love being a commissioner, I love working for the people. I like to keep the politics out of the side out of this and just look at what our number one job to do is, is we need to figure out the financial position of this county and how to make it stable. You know, for years and years and years and years and years, we've run the county government at a level we can't afford. We can't continue to get kicked down the road. We're no longer using ARPA funds. We're no longer using tax revolving funds. There's nowhere else to go. We need to make these decisions right now, get flush, get consistent with having a financial county that's run at a level that we can afford. These are not easy decisions. I've spent many, many sleepless nights over this. And I probably will continue to have those. This is hard stuff. Very, very hard stuff, but we have to get this figured out. We have nowhere else to go at this point. Mr. Simmons. Yeah, we had a discussion this morning by the committee about um about zoning costs. Didn't we not? We did. Yeah. And uh, I'd like to bring that up at another meeting. We need a whole meeting to discuss it further so we can see if we can develop this into, probably not this year, but maybe next year, develop it into a thing. Mr. Wilson was also privy to that uh, conversation. I think it's a good idea. Just had to make it work. That's all. That's all I have. Mr. Mayhew, any comments? No. I don't, I don't disagree with you guys as far as these decisions being tough. Um, just to be mindful, to be respectful. Um, I, I think it's good that we have a very uh, a board that's uh, we have a variety of opinions. Um, but just to respect those opinions um, and try to keep these meetings as professional as possible. Um, uh, for everybody's concern, I think every all the commissioners have an ample opportunity to to speak. If you don't, please let me know. Um, but I don't, I don't like when these meetings get out of hand. And I think we all agree that uh, these decisions are tough. We don't all agree. And I think that that's okay. I think that that's actually good. I think each one of us bring different opinions to the table. Um, try to respect everybody's decisions and uh, continue to be respectful. Or okay. Is there any public comment in the room? Any public comment on the phone? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.